So what we're doing today on Redstone Mechanics is we're going to make a, a, a code gate. And what that means is, you know, you can have any number of buttons that are going to produce your code for you. And this code is going to unlock or power on or off a circuit, gate, whatever, you know, whatever you got it hooked up to. You can have it hooked up to multiple things. It doesn't matter, you know, Redstone. Pretty much endless possibilities, right? Working with binary. So... Excuse me. Um, what it's going to do is uh, basically you only know the code and only you can open the door then unless somebody looks at your machine, which I will explain a little later. Hopefully you can pick up on that. This project, as you can see, was uh, modeled after one by Nerv1031 and he is an admin on the server. And I say the little uh, questiony because I'm not really sure... He hasn't really been on a lot lately, got a full-time job, so, you know, that's good stuff. So what you want to do here is, I don't use that first row by the green wall, because I just don't, I don't like to use it. I'm not really sure that the block is powered on. I'm actually pretty sure that the block isn't powered on, so you can't use it anyways, regardless. The wall in front of the diodes is where you start your pattern. And if you have four buttons, you have four rows for the most part. I mean, you can get a little more complicated if you want to, but that's not really a priority right now. We're only building a simple code gate. And you got four by four here, so that should be 16 wall blocks as you can see. 16. And how you put the code in is you want to go to the first one, and from the first one like row one, if you're counting up, like progressively from the buttons, you would put a block. Normally I put stone brick, but that's up to you. This block designates the code. So if you want the first button, or if you want the first code, first button in the code to be four, like we are doing here, you would go to row one behind the fourth button, and you would dig out your trench. And you need this trench to carry the signal down below to where we're going to process the code later and decide, you know, what's a good code and what's a bad code. So, as I learned from Nareb, looking at his project, you use uh, stone brick. It doesn't really matter what you use, it's just I'm using wool to distinguish between the circuits. Another thing Nareb did, which was really smart, because, you know, if you're building complex circuitry, you need to be able to distinguish between what's what, you know, memory latches, stuff like that. We're actually building a computer under this huge slab of sandstone, which happens to be our redstone testing facility at MC Frontiers. And it's kind of like an invite-only type thing. Got one apprentice working with us. That's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, Daniel one. And there's like some joke between him and his brother. And his brother's like one, two, three, four, five, Daniel two. And it's really confusing. And so I just call them both Daniel. So I really don't care. But uh, anyway, so, you know. Got our circuits here. And the reason for the blocks distinguishing between is just so you can change it up. Because you can change the code up anytime you want. You know, so it would be more or less a rolling code. Which you can actually make using pistons and stuff. But we're not working on that today. That's not our primary focus. Again, just a simple gate. And uh, you gotta hook up the wires, and that's pretty much it. And you're gonna see the video skip in about a minute because I messed something up, messed up the RS NOR latches over here. And for those of you who don't know, RS NOR latches are memory gates in Redstone. Very useful. Okay, you can see the video skipped, and this is actually how you make the proper RS NOR latch. The one I was making before was I was just retarded. Uh, and try to make it too small. So, a diode in front, I'm mass producing them. You know, you just, if you can follow what I'm doing to build one, they all look the same, so it's not really that bad. This is actually not, it's it's an RS NOR latch, but it's not uh, like a full RS NOR latch. The output is a little weird because I'm not hooking up an output. I don't need an output from this machine where the output would 
have come from normally. The output, we're actually going to put on the RS normal latches that we're going to build to process the code, distinguish between what's a good code and what's a bad code. So, what you want to do is you want to put an AND gate on top of these. And if, again, you're unfamiliar with Redstone, an AND gate is, uh, well, not even Redstone, just binary by itself. An AND gate means that if you turn on input A and you turn on input B, then you're going to turn on the output and we're going to call it C. So all these inputs, we're going to go, actually we're not going to call the output C, we're going to call it like A, B, C, D, we're going to call it E, okay, because we have four, so we have four inputs, A through D, and uh, well, that's wrong. We're actually going to raise this AND gate right now because I don't like how um, close it is to that reset circuit which is in white and blue is processing for this example uh, you, again you don't want it to interfere with the reset circuit because you don't want it turning on and then resetting itself like because you never get the code process so it would just be one fundamental error so we raise this up throw some torches on and this is where the AND gate comes in as you can see those torches are obviously powered on, right? And the reset circuit needs to be powered on to reset it. But we're not going to hook the reset circuit up to these torches. We're going to build an AND gate. So you lay out some redstone here, miss the spot, and uh, put a torch down. And that torch is off, and that's the one that's going to trigger our reset gate. So get some wool out. I bring it one past the block so I can drop the wire without having to uh, cover that up and separate and distinguish between the two wires. Like, put a block above the wire so it cuts the circuit, right? Uh, so you drop your redstone wire here. And you kind of want this circuit to be lengthy because it would be pointless if your door opened and shut in like one second, right? Or a couple ticks. That would just be stupid. By the way, tick is, for all intents and purposes, a diode is one tick. If you move it back one place, that's two ticks. And a diode can go up to four ticks. But if you put them in sequence, you can get more ticks out of the sequence. So, got to extend this because we need to put wire down to connect to the diodes, which are going to power this on. And the reason you use diodes on the reset switch is because you don't want feedback. So the diode is like... Well, it is actually, by definition, a one-way valve for electricity or redstone, you know, whatever you're working with. So, here we go, you know, building the reset circuit, bring it back, connect it, and then we're going to get to this part later. That goes into the basement, that's the reset circuit for the processing unit. And right here we're going to build um, some vertical wiring. I'm going to show you one and then we're going to fast forward because it's really boring. So you lay down redstone and torches every other block, and then you're good to go, you know. And you want to... It doesn't really matter what the last torch is, but you need the circuit to be powered on. So if the last torch is off, you can put a NOT gate at the end, which basically flips the signal from being on to being off which it's basically, it's literally actually just a torch on the side of a block. So here we are fast forwarding through. And George had mentioned to me earlier that that one was just different. So I went back up and I changed it. Not really a big deal, but again. And actually, if you've noticed the red zone that I'm putting down, see how it's flat and that one was a ball, if you can see that? Um, that's because redstone is flat when it's connected to something. Okay, like literally physically connected to something. Not that it has charge or anything, but that it's actually connected. So I don't know what he's doing there, but we're going to build our processing circuit now. I believe I'm going to fast forward through this part a little bit too because it's a little boring, but I'm going to build one just to show you. Um, that redstone actually I could have left there, but I'm not trying to confuse or anything, so I destroyed it for now. Uh, again, we're going to build... Uh, another R snore latch, but this one is a little bit like the one you saw upstairs, except it has that side block on it. And what that side block is going to allow us to do is give us an output, a desired output. And that desired output is going to turn into an AND gate. 
and that AND gate is going to say you can only turn on one, or you can only turn on two after one has been turned on. So you can't turn them on out of sequence. It won't work like that. Okay, so here we are. You know, typical, well not typical, but it's vertical RS1 latch. And you can see that's a, that's a mistake right there. You want these separated by two blocks. So I'm just going to destroy that. And build another one. So you want the uh, redstone to be connected at a perpendicular angle so it feeds in again. All redstone needs to be connected at a perpendicular angle to actually power the block. That's very crucial. So just going to fast forward through this here. And uh, that's your output. That's the last one in the circuit. I built four of those. That's the last one. You don't really need the side block. You can if you want. It's not really a big deal. But, I mean, you can draw the output from wherever you'd like at that last block. You can't draw it from the middle blocks because it would make the last number in the code completely useless, and that is just stupid. And what I just did there with that redstone torch was I just, I just reset the circuit manually. So, you know, again, redstone perp perpendicular to the block, so it powers in. And you don't want to cross wires here because and if you cross wires... All of a sudden, 3 is both number 2 and number 4 or something. Or number 2 and number 3 because they're next to each other. But if you do want to cross wires, I mean, you can do that if you want to distinguish. So you have 3 twice appearing in your code. I mean, you can totally do that. That's okay. Not really a big deal. So this circuit is pretty much done. Just building the... Uh, Reset, hooking that up. If you have any questions, you can get on the server. It's logon.mcfrontiers.com. I'll post that in the description for you. Just don't get on and start harassing the owner or anybody else, because that's not cool. Not cool at all. Uh, by the way, great server. If you guys like friendly staff, definitely recommend it to you. So I'll see you guys another time. Have a nice day.